coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Today we're going to take 100 of our high net worth customers to the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange. We're going to teach them how to trade options in a real open outcry environment. You, as a group, have $100,000 each. Oh, you better get it right then. And I don't think the customers really understood what was going to happen. No, this is 100, that's 10. They're doing hand signals and they're getting it wrong. The Hamptons are a happening place. Today, I have two good friends, people that I respect in the business, coming over to talk about an oil trade. So our view will be two to three years. One of our primary goals of this year is starting to come to fruition. Ken's been networking back and forth between New York and Miami. Yeah, this is yeah. where the party is. Right. I feel at home already. We figured it would be ideal if we open up another branch in Miami. What Six kind of price range are we looking at here? Five million and up. Wipe it out. Why would you say wipe it out? Five million dollars. Having it, a location now. We're getting the location right of now. Of course it is. Over the last two weeks, there's been a good amount of fear in the marketplace with respect to the financial crisis and whether or not we're really in a recession or not. The VIX has been very volatile the last few weeks. Uh, we've seen some tre tremendous moves in the market, so obviously it's a fear indicator. I think people call the VIX the fear gauge. People call it a sentiment gauge. As the market goes lower, uncertainty creeps back in the market. You'll see the VIX typically go higher. Only 250 at 30 now. We're trading options on volatility. So to a certain extent, it's trading volatility of volatility itself. You can just have insane risk in this product where if there was some market disaster, you know, you're basically off the floor and blown out. We've seen the market come off tremendously throughout uh, this whole banking crisis, and now you're just seeing a, just a, a ripple effect. It's kind of like you're at the tail end of a roller coaster. Which month? We'll sell you 500! 500 dish! 500! Dish! 500! Dish! Dish! 500! Dish! 500! So this guy just bought 24,000 SEP calls in the VIX. Average daily volume is probably around 90,000, so to have one trade that would represent a third of that, he's really making a pretty big bet that the future is going to go up substantially in the next 40 days, roughly. You guys got 1,100 on the book! The market's kind of looking for a bottom right now. Every day you come in, you never know what you're going to get. What? 250! Philip Broussard, I'm going to transfer to Ken real quick. Okay, hold on. One of our primary goals of this year is starting to come to fruition, and that was to uh, tap into the sports network world. Good morning, how are you? Ken's been networking back and forth between New York and Miami. And he's made a lot of contacts. One in particular was Andre Goodman with the Miami Dolphins. He's invited us to come down to Miami. It's kind of hard pinpointing a time with training and curfew. So he told us, just come down there and we'll work it out. So we decided to jump on a flight and try to uh, meet with Andre. Well, this is Miami. Why don't you give that guy a call right now? Right there, already. And he's practicing. He said he'll call us when he's done. When we got down there, it was uh, a lot more difficult than I thought. It's like trying to get in contact with the president. You know, just be a little patient. The uh, guy should be getting out shortly, so. You got to keep in mind, he's in the midst of a season. Season starts in two days. It was like a circus, you know, going here to there, trying to just pinpoint a moment that he could be free. Well, 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 sir. Is that him? Yep. This is Ken. Hey, Andre, how are you? Really? Okay. Okay. 
Well, let me ask you this. I mean, how about if we meet you in the parking lot? My question is, are we going to meet with Andre? I don't know. Thank you. For the last four years, we've taken 100 of our high net worth customers, brought them to the floor of the Chicago Board Options Exchange. It's one of the few that are still open outcry. Today, we're going to teach them how to trade options in a real open outcry environment. They get to see it from a perspective that most people will never, ever experience. I remember it was all done with hand signals, too, you know, originally, even be while the screens were up there. <laughs> that's a, well, that's zero, but that's a hundred. You know, this, 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 this is, you know, you're buying a hundred. This is selling a hundred. Later today, we're gonna have a live competition to see who can make the most money. You paid twenty cents for something that's worth zero. Each group will have their own market maker, like myself, Tom Sosnoff, to guide them through each trade that they're gonna make. Yeah, we're looking for the higher numbers. So Q, the leader of the Lake Monster team, has won it the last few years. Everybody's coming for him. So what's the probability of him repeating three times in a row? Probably very, very slim. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Slim to none. The next thing we do is we take them right down to the mud floor. Mudcats, mudcats. We break up into our groups. We go right into the S&P 100 or OEX pit, one of the last open outcry pits, which is where I personally made my living for 20 some odd years. So, welcome to the OEX pit. This used to be the largest trading pit in the world. The Thinkorswim team came from this pit here. Most of us. Tony, myself, Steve, Ira. So we kind of grew up here, so this is very familiar, very familiar space to us. So the game is pretty easy. Our brokers today, they have 15 orders. You have, as a group, have $100,000 each. You have one market maker, not making all your decisions, just helping you. I promise you, none of these people that are running your groups, none of these guys have seen these orders because this is very competitive for us. I mean, I actually think that the odds are favoring the warthogs. <laughs> I generally come out to the Hamptons probably three to four days a week. Communications are so good that you can really work from just about anywhere today, particularly in what I do. The Hamptons are filled with private equity managers, hedge fund managers, people from finance. So there's no reason really to be on Wall Street anymore. Today, I have two very good friends, people that I respect in the business, coming over to visit. I want to bounce some ideas off them about an energy trade, just to get their thoughts. Tony I met 20 years ago. He was one of my first clients in the investment business. Well, Tony's an excellent risk manager. He recently retired from the business. I'll do everything I can to get him back to trading again because I thought he was a wonderful trader. During the past 12 months, Sandy has focused on energy projects around the world. So I think she can add some valuable input as well. Rich asked me to come by because he is looking into energy and I understand um, seeking to put together an energy team and wanted to pick my brains a little bit. Hopefully, between the three of us, I'll walk away with a better understanding of how to play this particular move. Hey, what's hey. up, buddy? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good, good. Good to, good. See, good you. to see you. Come in. Hey, so you're So, go, 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 go. so 15, 15 men. 15 men. Double bid. 2,000. This is one of the best examples of the SIBO's hybrid marketplace. So you have open outcry trading and computerized trading. You can come in through a broker, the old fashioned way, screaming and shouting, or you can just come in electronically. Computerized trading really gives you point-and-click access for customers who are speed sensitive. So if you just want to trade a 500 lot as fast as you possibly can, it's instantaneous execution. On the flip side, the institutional base, people with lots of money to invest, they want to trade in large size. Open outcry works for them. It allows people to try and look for price improvements. For large and complex orders, open outcry is still the best uh, price discovery mechanism. 96% of our trades get done electronically. But the 4% of the trades that get done open outcry still represent about 25% of our volume. 
Uh, the advantage of open outcry against electronic trading, the S&P is a $1,300 stock, basically is what it is, and it moves very fast. We have brokers that bring big orders into the crowd. He'll ask us to our face, how many are you good for? I might be 500, I might be 1,000. So you multiply that by the 10 guys around me, he has 10,000 up right now. Real time on the telephone, the customer knows how deep the market is where electronically he might have to do a little fishing and find out exactly what's going on. By that time, the market has moved three more dollars. It's too late. So now you're looking at a whole different price parameter. So open outcry is the best way to trade the S&P product because it moves so quick, but you get immediate answers. I'm really looking forward to seeing Rich again because we haven't gotten together in a long time and so much has happened in the markets. I'm curious to hear what Rich is up to. Nice to see you again, Rich. Say hi to my buddy, Tony. Hi, hi how Tony. Are you? Nice, to, nice meet you. to meet you. So I'm glad you're here. I want to try to capitalize on the move that we've had in crude. It's the most volatile commodity and the most volatile sector uh, in the securities business today. I just wanted to get your thoughts on the ways that we can play it. I know some guys that are looking at different approaches from elaborate econometric models that are going to analyze uh, long-term growth in GDP around the world and translate that into demand for energy. And then the opposite extreme where they're saying, look, you know, let the market tell us which way to go. If the trend is up, we'll stay long. If the trend is down, we'll stay short. Well, I think there are a lot of uh, variables in the equation, such as details about supply, like in Saudi Arabia, that's highly disputed. I think until alternatives are developed, there's going to be increased demand and constricted supply because it's in harder to get places. Sandy confirmed my thoughts as to where the energy market could be heading. You're going to find uh, equity positions less volatile than trading crude itself. And Tony put on his trader risk manager hat and confirmed that a basket of securities and derivatives would probably be the best way to approach this. We're looking at this, our view will be two to three years. I think it was a productive afternoon. I'm more confident of how to take advantage of any upcoming move in energy. It sounds like an interesting way to go. Based on what we just talked about, it just may make sense to look more closely at this. And if you guys would like to stay, I'd like to make some margaritas and perhaps we can that talk some great. more. Yeah, sounds good. Great. So remember, today you're a market maker. So you're trading without knowing what the next trade's gonna be. And you have to manage this portfolio and you're basically gonna build a position around one roll of the dice. One of the best ways to have them learn is to have them play a game. It's like being at Wrigley Field playing a pickup game. You're at the Chicago Board Options Exchange where options were invented. So at the very end of this game, somebody's gonna come up here in front of all of you, roll two dice. And wherever the dice lands, that's going to be the closing price of this particular index. Tom gave us a little synopsis of what's going to happen, and I don't think the customers really understood what was going to happen until it really did. Everybody ready? You ready? Okay, Steve will start exactly at 4.30. Even in a fake arena, you're nervous. There's competitiveness. You want to win. You don't want to make a bad trade, especially when you got your boss sitting there, especially when you got other instructors sitting there. Is that 110 or the 115 foot? Yeah. It was great to watch the customers when they first started trading. They looked like deer stuck in the headlight. Their eyes were as big as sauces. But you only break even after five. They're doing hand signals and they're getting it wrong. Right? Oh, you better get it right then, because I just traded 6000 They're selling when they're supposed to be buying. They don't understand bid and offer. You put your hand out, I put my hand in. Did I buy a hundred? No, this is a hundred. That's ten. This is a hundred. You know, some of those guys that were standing up there are the live brokers who are trading in the OEX. Those guys that are yelling and screaming all day for a living were there doing it with them in a mock trading form. Ray! Ray! Wayne! Wayne, sir! Like John Wayne! 
I buy a hundred. <laughs> Another hundred. Call it two hundred. These guys are yelling and screaming. Their voices are all raspy from 20 years of trading. What? I buy another hundred. 18, 19 puts, Fred. It's unique to watch the customers. And then, if you notice, by the end, they all want to trade. Hey, 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 let me trade, let me trade. And they started yelling and screaming. So it's really only 11 and 12. We took some high probability trades and made them early. We saw something collectively, what we think the dice are gonna be rolled at, what the market's gonna end up at. So, you know, in about 10 minutes, we'll find out who was right. Okay, so what time today? I don't know. Whoa. So Andre proved impossible to meet with. But that was okay, because another reason for us going to Miami was to look at real estate. We're starting to build a decent client base down here, and Ken's been doing a lot of flying back and forth. We're considering opening up a full-time Miami office, and Ken really wants to try living down here. So we made arrangements to look at some property. You see the ocean is down there. The home is 6,000 square feet, four levels, elevator. This is the master bedroom here, three bedrooms on the top floor. The question is, which one's mine? Uh, I think all of them probably yours. <laughs> so now we're going up to the rooftop terrace, guys. Yeah, this yeah. is where the party is. Right. The cozy fits 10 people. Great for entertaining guests, especially entertainers and athletes, because they like to party and they like to be in their jacuzzi. I like this a lot. And I don't mind them partying in their jacuzzi either, uh, as long as they're uh, bringing us some more money and some more referrals. I love this view. It's gorgeous. I mean, yeah. I feel just as I feel at home already. Yeah. Yeah, this looks fantastic, Harry. I mean, what are you asking for this? Uh, right now we're at 2.4 million. So this is your ocean view here, guys. I whispered in Kenzie, I said, listen, this is a good opportunity because you know what? Everyone's here with their yachts. Another good market to start networking as well. This is definitely saying welcome to uh, Miami. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is something totally different. Four car garage, movie theater, seven bedrooms, game room, library. This looks fantastic. I, I, yeah. I, I like this view. Do. That one's going to be ready in April, so we could customize it any way you like at this point. I like it a lot. You look like you're sold. I like to fly with a parachute, so I don't just jump blindly into things. Myself and Ken are going to have to have a major sit down and uh, break down the numbers. Yeah, what kind of price range are we looking at here? Everything is going to be five million and up. Five, okay, five million. Five million. Okay. Yeah. Five million dollars. Um, it's not happening. Uh, no way, no how can't do. You have so much land space here on two and a half acres. More land than, you, than you'll ever need. Everything is so spread out, you would barely even see a neighbor. I want to be in an environment where you can actually bump into a professional athlete or an entertainer or another trader. At a dot, going fast. Sell at 20 cents. Maybe I want to do 22. I heard condo. I want to pay a dollar. Doing that for a dollar, you could lose two dollars. If we sell a hundred straddles, then that basically turns our position into a hundred short calls. I want to see who made money. There's no clear winner yet until the dice get rolled. It's tight. It's tight. What is it? A ten? So that's ten thousand dollars. After we did all the trades, we had to own up. How did we do? We sold 500 of the 1819 call spreads. In this game, it was a roll of the right? dice, uh, simulating what the market would do when a 10 came out. The probability of a 10 coming out is not good. It's going to be tough for us, guys. <laughs> we were doing trades that fit our perspective. Every little group had their own perspective because everybody has an opinion. We wanted a six. A 10 is obviously not a number we played for. But we hung in there and we lost, we actually lost money, we lost $14,500. We made $23,000. We were down eight grand, all in on six, so. Right, we made 31000 We made 9000 We were not hoping for anything like that and we did not cover our wings, but we made high probability trades because we only lost 16000 250 bucks. Q, how are you guys? We were not looking for a 10, but we know how to trade, so we made money, $44,000. As expected, uh, our undefeated champion was uh, good at this. Remember, this is play money, not real money. 
Uh, he won this round, so tomorrow when we go to live trading, we'll see how he really does. But he did an excellent job, and uh, he's very, very, very good at this. He's an excellent trader, I kid you, but he's an excellent trader. But tomorrow, it's real money. This is fake money. Three things are important in a margarita. Tequila, tequila, <laughs> and tequila. Relax, Tony, you're retired. Sandra, will you try this? Sure. Well, you look great. You look like retirement agrees with you. Yeah. You went from being one of the biggest bond traders on the planet to a paramedic. How did the transition happen? It was riding down the street one day and it just popped into my head. Was it an attractive paramedic, an ambulance driver that you saw when you passed the firehouse? <laughs> At this stage of my life, I won't do business with somebody unless I like them and I enjoy them. It's just, like I said, it, seriously, it just came out of the blue. You know, maybe it is just a, a call. Yeah. I find it interesting when people have two cell phones, one for business and one for pleasure. I have one cell phone. My customers are my friends. I never feel like I'm selling. I never feel like I'm pushing. And they're totally candid and open and honest with me. Do you miss the street at all? Yeah, very. Yeah, I, I do. I always enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it a lot, and I still trade my own account a little bit. I don't want to take anything away from your current career, but you did say you're working two days a week. Do you think about starting a hedge fund? <laughs> <laughs> Is that in the cards? I mean, I don't know where business ends and friendship begins, and I just totally trust them to the end. Watch the speed limit. Your paramedic card's not going to get you out of any trouble here in <laughs> Southampton. It was a good day. I got some good, interesting feedback. The Hamptons sort of lends itself to a meeting like this to be out of the hustle and bustle of the city. There are no phones in the background, no sirens. Bye, Sam. So it just worked out beautifully. Well, Phil, what are you thinking? Out of all the properties that we took a look at in Miami, what are we going to do? Financially, does it doesn't make any sense. Of course it does, because you know what? This is where we're going to butter the bread, right here in Miami. There's no one else that does what we do in Miami. We have all the athletes. I mean, we have Andre. We have a few other candidates on the table right now. Just having the location. It, just it, having the location. Is it worth getting the location right of now? Of course it is. I got to think about that, because... Hey, what's there know. to think about? It saves us from going back and forth and flying. You know, I mean, we're spending a fortune. I won't lie, the uh, the estate, forget about it. Wipe it out, wipe it out. Why would completely. you say wipe it out? Five million dollars. It if doesn't this, matter. I mean, did look you look at the, the financial, look, look, I looked take, at the comp, take a look I understand at the that. Page. Ken presented his case, he had a lot of good points, but the estate home, five million dollars, it's never gonna happen. Not in his wildest dreams. Let's go back to the first property that we were looking at. Even though I like the Coconut Grove property, he had to really convince you know, me. What are we going to tell them, to drive down to New York or fly down to New York to meet us? What we're spending traveling back and forth. Is it really necessary? I mean, we're financial advisors. This is what we do for our clients. So we can't be frivolous with our own capital. Well, Phil, we need to make a deal here. I mean, what are we going to do? Finally, myself and Ken did come to an agreement. I'm going to go with you, Ken. Okay. I'm going to let like you I swing said, the stick on this one. Well, like I said, we come to Miami, make our mark, and we'll go from there. Right now, we're going to head over to Tudo Italiano, which is a bar, get everybody inebriated. So tomorrow, not only do they make high probability trades, they make drunk trades. So <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> this is the money shot. This has been the win all day. We're in Florida. Oh. That was an air ball, though. You know what? The ball has all air, but that's why I stick that, 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 that was an air ball. What the f are we doing? I don't reach out the floor. <laughs> 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 